Ah, uh, frick. Remember when I said in my last video I was going on vacation to Orlando and it was going to be a 16 hour drive? Well, I was dead wrong. No, it ended up being a 25 hour drive both ways. And at the time of recording, I just got back from that 25 hour drive again. So I need a vent a little bit. Excuse me. Okay, okay. I think I got it all out of my system. Okay, now I did. Besides the drive, my vacation was pretty good. And if you saw my video on Iron Gwazi's holdup, I said Bush Gardens was supposed to be one of the highlights of my trip, and it was. But if I compare my day to my expectations, it's not quite as I imagined. Plus, I had a lot more fun at the other parks I went to. I spent three days at Universal, one day at Hollywood Studios, and the one day I went to Busch Gardens would most likely be my least favorite day of the trip. It's nothing against the park. I love the park. When I was there, I was on a time crunch. There were a few unfortunate inconveniences that slowed me down. If I had a second day, I would praise this park a lot more, but sadly I just have the one, so I'm gonna go off that. Let me just start from the beginning. When I got to the park, my first shed of disappointment was a few of the major rides were not gonna be open for the day. They were Cobra's Curse, Cheetah Hunt, and the Sky Ride. I mean, it sucks, but fortunately the three B&Ms were going to be open, so I wasn't too bummed about it. I do wish the Sky Ride was open though, because it was a pain walking around the park. I forgot how large Busch Gardens parks were. Williamsburg was gigantic, and this was also gigantic. We were trying to go Sheikra first, but we went the long way around. It was a mile and a half. I know that because there were mile markers along the pathway. And when you're on a time crunch and don't know the layout of the park, you want to try to go fast. Once we got to Shikra, that ride had the longest line in the park, and I was fed up by how little it moved. It all stems from the nightmare of the fast pass people. I kid you not, the employees did not let the standby line move. I paid attention on how they alternated between the lines. It was a full train fast pass people, then half a train fast pass, half standby, then full train fast pass again, then so on and so forth. I hate hate when a line just doesn't move. You take a few steps like every five minutes because the dispatches are taking too long. Then you see empty seats on the ride and you're like, why is it taking so long and why aren't the employees filling up the train? Those things just trigger me so much. How was my ride in Chikra? It was fine. Wasn't really worth the wait because dive coasters and all that. Better than Valraven, not better than Griffin. Moving on. The next thing we did was go to Montu, and that's probably my favorite ride in the park. I know Kumba has its fans, but that ride has a few problems with it. I can handle the shakiness and a few potholes here and there. Kumba just has the same problem as Incredible Hulk. The second half is just kind of there. The corkscrews are visually appealing. They're just not really my thing. And the helix at the end gives me a headache. Montu, I really love the elements on the ride. They're forceful. It's got the best invert element with the bat wing, just like Afterburn. However, is it my favorite invert? I think it is. Like Raptor, it's just barely better than a Batman clone, but not as good as Alpengeist. Banshee, it gives me a headache. I don't like it. And going back to Afterburn, that was my favorite invert. But Montu is just longer and is a buffet of elements. You got a vertical loop, you got an Immelman, Zero G roll, Batwing. There's no shortage of a variety. If I had to criticize it, I would say the mid-course break run kind of kills it. And the turn between the corkscrew and the vertical loop is very forceless, where it feels like you're just crawling through it. Still a very exquisite ride. After Montu and Kumba, there was like a two hour buffer period of nothing happening. We tried going on Tigris, but there was a 50 minute wait, and I was skeptical of that because that ride is one train, and with fast pass people flooding the line, I wasn't gonna sit through that, so we left. And that was probably a mistake, because after that we tried going on the train, but we just missed it as it left the station. So we decided to wait the 35 to 40 minutes for the train to circle back around. And when we got on the train, it was cool. I love the conductor, he was hilarious. He was cracking a lot of jokes, even poking fun at Iron Gwazi for not opening. Very knowledgeable about the roller coasters and the park itself. It was fun. We were gonna go around the whole thing, but we actually ended up seeing Cheetah Hunt running, which I was shocked because I wasn't expecting it to open that day. So we ended up getting off at the first station and just booking it to Cheetah Hunt. And here's where things started to go down south. We waited in line for about 20 minutes and it shut down. We were gonna stick it out and wait, but the ride-up said it was gonna be a lengthy delay, so we bailed. We tried riding Montu again, 
but it broke down. Then we ran across the whole park trying to get to Falcon's Fury, then it broke down. You can tell the exact moment where I got pissed. After that, we went on Kumba again, which actually was the last ride we got on before. So in a two hour period, we ended up just going back to Kumba, which just wasted a ton of time. When our Kumba rides were finished, we tried our luck again with Cheetah Hunt, and luck behold, it was open. And we were able to get on the ride. The line was a bore, just like Shikra, but we got on. And what did I think of it? Eh, honestly, I didn't really care much for Cheetah Hunt. The most forceful part of the ride was probably the launch out of the station. I just didn't get anything out of Cheetah Hunt. I didn't feel any forces. The airtime was subpar. The parts that are supposed to be rapid fire elements were just swaying back and forth. Some people have compared this to Copperhead Strike. Don't you dare compare this mediocre Intamin to that Mac Ride's masterpiece. Not what I was expecting with this ride, but I am grateful for the park to even getting it open for the day. After that, we finished off on Montu, and the day was pretty much over. Now, how come I'm saying this day could have been better? Surely a few ride breakdowns can't justify my opinion on the park. No, the reason I'm saying this day could have been better is more because I feel like I should have seen more of the animals. I know I said in my Animal Kingdom review that I don't really care much for zoo park hybrids. I just walk past the animals and kind of acknowledge them. It's just here, I felt like I should have done it. My main complaint with the Williamsburg Park is they didn't have enough animals, and here, they were everywhere. I was impressed by the few habitats I did see, and there were a lot of trails and exhibits that I didn't even get to experience. I wish I would have done that instead of that two hours of nothing. All I need is more time here. The only animals I do remember were elephants, lions, toucans, and cichlids. Like, really, Jake, you bothered looking at the cichlids? You have a tank full of them at your house. Don't bother wasting your time there. But next time I do go, I will make this a priority. Other than that, that's really all I could say about the park. Before I sign off, I want to mention a uh, kind of funny experience I had with a guest, because I just thought this was an awkward thing that happened. Like, I was walking by Iron Gwazi's entrance because, you know, I was depressed and wanted it to open. And then a random person came up to me and asked, Hey, have you heard of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? What? Would you like to attend our church or something? In that situation, all I did was look at them to find a name tag, because I was thinking, do you work here? Then I realized, oh, you're just a guest who came to a theme park trying to preach the name of Jesus. I didn't want to start a conversation, so I just said, no thank you, and walked away. I didn't want to be rude, but I didn't even know if she was preaching Christianity because she was holding a piece of paper and it looked like a weird zodiac. I don't know, it was just weird. Besides that encounter, the guests here were kind of a mixed bag. A lot of them were pleasant, and others try to recruit me or smoke in line. That's all I have to say for right now. Tune in next week for a new upload. Please subscribe. I'm not here to force you, but I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.